So for today, it's kind of a review day of binomial. Uh, and this uh, is just a review of one part of it. But we don't do it this way. We do our binomial just like an easier way. And we'll talk through that formula a little more in a second. What if I just had x plus 1 to the uh, fourth? Would you please just expand that out? How many blanks would there be? Would there be four? Five. Five. This is too easy. The quiz is even harder than this. Of destiny, who should I call on? Oh, by the way, take your name tags and actually tip them up so I can see your name. I am going to row five, last person, Campbell. What, how do I start this thing? Okay. All right, so which of those was actually kind of irrelevant? <coughs> Good. And we'll move on to a different person. This is uh, row five, second to last person. That's you, Mr. V. Oh, you do one, you put it on the place, and then you... One to the <coughs> close, it's the other way around. There we go. And then it eventually gets to one to the fourth. Okay, and is that it? No, there's one more thing. Allison, what do you say? So like this one would be what, choose what? Excellent, can you do that in your head? Yeah, it's one. It's one, if you're having four things and you're picking zero of them, there's one way to do that. All right, so that one's one. This one's four, choose one. A little harder, but it's still easy. Four things, you want to choose them one at a time, so that one's four. This one you might need to actually bust out the calculator. That's why I was saying you might want to have that. Because four choose two, it's not super easy to do. Four choose two. It is four factorial over four minus two is two factorial with an extra one of these, two factorial. You can do it that way, and you wouldn't even need a calc. So this is on the ACT. Do you get why? Since their rules are, every problem has to be able to be done without a calculator, that they can put this on the ACT because you can do it with this. Now, if you have a calculator, it gives you a little advantage, though, maybe. So you could type it in for NCR2. Either way, you should be able to get this answer. I personally am just going to do it this way. And 2 times 1 cancels 2 times 1. 4 times 3 is 12. Divided by 2 is 6. Raise your hand if you knew that was going to be a 6. Okay, good. So that's a 6 right there. All right, now get them all straightened away. You still have this one and this one to do. And there's five blanks. Be ready to read me your final answer with all five blanks. If yours is messy like mine is, just clean it up. And this first one is just x to the fourth plus etc. All right, I'd like you to compare after you've got your five blanks written out, compare it with the person next to you. So we double checked and this appears to be our binomial expansion, those five terms. All right, could it be harder? Way harder. Okay, so what if I did, this is what we did last time. What could I do that it would have made it harder? Last time we did it to the fourth, I think, or whatever. But do you get if I made this to the seventh, that would be harder. Not tons harder, but harder. What else would make it harder? Yes. Negative. Yes. What else would make it harder? Yes. I don't there was another variable. Yes. Instead of just like a minus one, what if it's a minus two uh, m? What else could make it harder? Because whatever you can think of, we're probably going to do that. Yes? You put a power on the x or the 
Yes, let's make this to the third. What else could we do to make it harder? Put something on the outside of the parentheses. We wouldn't actually put something on the outside because then it wouldn't be a binomial anymore. Okay. Uh, yes? Yes, so let's make this over three. Okay, there. Now that would just be too hard because you have eight terms and there'd be just too many chances to screw up. But what if I asked you for, not the first term, that's a little too easy, the second term of this. Now, pro tip, I would actually do the first term and the second term, but I would know that if I don't really have to do the first term. You know what I mean? Because like, I'd take this part and I would put it to the seventh first when I, right here, you know, put that to the seventh. And then I would go, oh, yeah, so the one I really care about is that to the sixth. All right, so do your best. This will kick a lot of butts, but just do your best. I'll pause for a second and give this a shot. Okay, so the second term here. Well, first off, it's always got that seven choose thing, you know, in front, this would be seven choose zero. This would be seven choose one. Well, that's an easy one. What is seven choose one? Seven. And then I need this part, which is an x to the third over three to the, well, it, here it would have been to the seventh. So here it's to the sixth. And then we have the negative two m and that here would have been negative 2m to the 0. Here it's to the first. So now if I can just do all of this, I have a negative 2 to the first. I have a 7. That makes negative 14 on the top. There is a 3 to the sixth on the bottom because of right here. So there's a 3 to the sixth down there. Uh, and then we have x's. Our x's are to the third and then to the sixth. That makes it x to the 18th. And then our m is just m to the first, so m. I think I have it, but I could easily have made a mistake. Did anybody get the same thing as I did? Raise your hand if you did. It's a lot of you, but not all of you. Okay, do you, do you have questions like, hey, where did you get the 7 from? Or, or you know... Why is it 14? I, I don't know. Which part of it don't you get? Yes? On the test, are you going to want us to simplify the 3 to the 6th? The 3 to the 6th. Oh, oh, gotcha. Since you have a calculator, I'll tell you on the test. Since you have a calculator, though, yeah, you could have done the 3 to the 6th. So it's a really big number. Here. Did you do it? What is it? 729. Thank you. I'll just put it there. That makes it more clear. But yeah, you should do that since you have a calculator. All right, any other questions? Well, today is just talking about really hard binomial expansions like that. Okay, and there's one more way they can ask the question, and it goes something like this. Everybody write this down. x squared minus 2 over x to the third. Now, if I just asked you to do that binomial expansion, the thing that's weird this time is that the x's are in both spots. There's one on the right, there's one on the left. You still just do the same system that you did before. This x to the second goes on all your four blanks, etc. But instead of having you do all four, there's gonna be the slow way and the fast way. All right, at some point, let me just double check this in my head here. There's going to be one that has an x to the third in it. As in, on one of these lines, when it's all simplified, when it's all done, it'll have an x to the third in it. I'm not saying it's the third term. It might be the first term. might be the second term. might be the third term. might be the fourth term. But something's going to have an x to the third in it. Now, could you just find all four terms and then go, oh, that one's got an x to the third in it. Sure, you could do that. But could you like do something in between where you like go process of elimination and just go, well, can I tell if there would be an x to the third in this first one? And if you're like, oh, 
nope, there's not going to be x to the third in the first one. You can just cross that off and then not do that term. You see what I'm saying? All right, so that's your challenge. Everybody try this one and either do all four terms of it and then figure out which one had an x to the third in it. Or use some logic and go, well, it can't be this one, can't be that one. And is it possible that there isn't any term that had an x to the third in it? And remember, this means when it's all simplified down, that there's just x to the third in it. All right. Yes? You're saying x to the third, that means there's no, like, it's just x to the third, everything else canceled? Yep. There's no coefficients? No, no, no. What I mean is that there might be a 2x to the third over 7 or something like that, but there's an x to the third in it. Okay. So the safest way is to just do all the terms, but it's just kind of slow. So I'll probably just do all the terms and see which one ends up having an x to the third in it. Yes? Well, I, that, my point is that you should try it, and then his theory is that it's the second term. Well, maybe you guys should figure out the second term, see if you agree if, if it's got an x to the third in it or not. Okay. Remember, though, that when I just put this x to the second, I got to put it to the third on the first line. You know what I mean? But there's also an x on the bottom, but these don't have a common denominator. Ew, there's a lot of complications here. How about this? Let's just start this problem together. I'm going to start with that x squared right there. And I'm going to just go x squared to the third, x squared to the second, x squared to the first, and x squared to the zero. Now, everybody, go take this negative 2 over x and do it all the way through. And at some point, there hopefully will be one of the terms will have an x to the third in it. So now we're going to go distribute this. Negative 2. I'm going to put the negative on the 2. You actually could have put it on the x if you wanted to, but it won't play quite as nice. i put this to the 0. Negative 2 over x to the 1 negative 2 over x to the 2, negative 2 over x to the third. And it's really easy to forget those choose things, you know? So this has got 3 choose 0 in front of it. This one's got a 3 choose 1 in front of it. This one's got a 3 choose 2. This one's got a th 3 choose 3. All right. I would like to give you a, just a little more time. And then uh, what we're going to do is have this little quiz. It's going to get over with... Actually, you know what? I think I should assign your homework first because some people are going to finish the quiz in one minute. Like, seriously. Like, seriously. Maybe one minute. Other people will, will want it 10 minutes to be extra careful. And then you'll want to be able to start on something. So let's show you what your homework's going to be in a minute. Let's finish this first, though. All right. How many of you think the x to the third ended up in the first term? Raise your hand if you think that's the case. Who thinks it's in the second term? There's a lot of hands. So let's investigate the second term, which is this one. 3 choose 1 is 3. So this part's 3. And then I have x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. And then I have negative 2 to the 1, which is negative 2, which can times by the 3. 3 times the negative 2 makes negative 6. Negative 6x to the fourth over 
x to the one, which is x. Look at that. That one does have an x to the third in it. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, cool. Just clarify, that cancels, so it's negative 6x to the third. Where'd the negative 6 come from? This 3, did you have a 3 from the 3, choose 1? Times this negative 2. Made our negative 6. Okay. All right, so now I just need to show you which problems of the homework I think you should do because we've covered everything else. Uh, this is officially what you're doing with the binomial uh, theorem. You remember the choose things? And they're just putting an N on top because, you know, like until you get to three, choose three, you're not done. Uh, we just practice things just like that. And this is saying which would have X to the third in it. That's a lot like what we just did, except the one we just did was way harder. All right. Pascal's triangle again. If you want to use these one through three, one, when you have a four term expansion, that works. But if we give you a 15 one, 15 by expansion to the 15th, you'd have to do 15, choose zero for your first one, et cetera, because you're never going to be able to memorize this. It's a cool problem. And here's the ones I would do. I would do both of these. So don't cross off either one. I would just do both. On this page, I would cross off... Uh, let me try to remember what I assigned last hour. I think that first one's good. So let's cross off the second one. So let's just do the first one. It's like which, ter which one has the term x to the third in it? A lot like we just did. Okay. On, on this page, cross off this one. And then it says, find the constant term. Do you guys get that means the one that doesn't have a variable? If it says constant. Now, that doesn't always mean the last term, especially when they have like things like this in them. You got to think through which one it might be. It's not always the last one. So let's just do one of those. Let's do the middle one. So I'm not saying you can't do seven. I'm just saying... If you did all the ones that I'm telling you about, you'd be okay. If you want an extra practice one, number seven's good. And that is it. So for the rest of the hour, I'm going to give you this quiz. You're going to finish it pretty quick. Then I want you to just work on that homework. The other thing is there's a few of you that didn't turn in last night's Schoology quiz. I'll still take it. You should do it over the weekend, or frankly, you should do it in class today. The Schoology quiz you were supposed to do yesterday. Strongly recommend it. Counts in your grade. And we're really early, so there's only like two homework assignments. Unless you want your parents to look, go look at your grade and you'll have a like C minus because you didn't do one of the two things. All right, so bottom line, do your homework. Uh, and that's all I have for you for the video for today.